Now, New York's number one news. Channel 7 Eyewitness News this morning. Tragedy at a state fair in Ohio. One person dead, several others hurt after they were thrown from a ride. New video from the overnight. And we've learned the same ride was recently operating right here in our area. But first, we are following breaking news that Riker's inmate who escaped has been caught. And police didn't have to look too far to find him. That's right. Now the big question is, how was he able to escape? Dre Clark, live in Queens, and has new information for us. Dre. Lori, good morning. That very question will be the focal point of a pending investigation. How did all of this happen? Meanwhile, 24-year-old inmate Naquan Hill never made it off of Rikers Island. He was found at around 3 o'clock this morning hiding inside a trailer not too far away from where he was last seen with other inmates. Now, a massive land, air, and sea search effort was launched last night. Hill disappeared from a small recreation yard at the Anna M. Croft Center. He was one of six inmates in that area being supervised or supposed to be supervised by three officers and a captain. We're told some of the inmates intentionally distracted the guards while Hill climbed the fence and made his getaway. It wasn't until the inmates returned inside that officers realized Hill was missing because their head count was off. The jail was immediately placed on lockdown while officers searched the island and the East River, which surrounds the island here, and traffic leaving Rikers Island was also brought to a standstill, leaving family members on buses for hours wondering what in the world was going on. When I seen like the helicopters and stuff like that, I was like, okay, and then they weren't letting anyone leave. I'm like, someone must have escaped. We were there since 7.15 on the bus. People passed out. We couldn't get water. Couldn't get off the bus. Now, Naquan Hill is currently here at the jail serving time for a uh, burglary charge, rather. He is a repeat offender. He actually served four years in state prison for prior burglaries. And he was just released last year. But again, he was found this morning at around 2.50 hiding in a trailer. Now the focus shifts to the investigation. Uh, they certainly would like to know how this could have happened with three officers and a captain supposedly watching the moves of all of those six inmates who were in that recreation yard last night. We're live this morning in Queens. Drake Clark, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. I'm Heather O'Rourke, and we're looking at this breaking traffic news in New Jersey, 78 eastbound side. You have only one lane open with a dump truck accident. Newscopter 7 is up above. John Del Giorno is here with more information. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, Heather. We've got ourselves quite a problem and a really slow morning on Interstate 78. Now, those of you that travel this stretch, Heather and I both very familiar with this stretch of roadway. There's been overnight construction out here for a couple of weeks, so it hasn't been great for the morning commute in the first place. This morning, we've got this dump truck accident to throw in there. This is eastbound 78 right at exit 45. That's the exit for Glenside Avenue in Summit. It looks like that dump truck struck the bridge abutment, and now we've got a fuel spill as well. Only the right shoulder is open, and these delays are packed in really solid. Even though it's the summertime, we've got delays all the way back to exit 41. Those delays are building. Heather? Thank you for that, John. We also have problems with our six trains. It's switching problems at 125th Street and also on 78. As you go eastbound right near exit 12, that accident is still out there. At least two lanes are blocked off. Cross Bronx West at the Major Deegan, that's an accident. Very heavy delays as you make your way all the way from at least the Bruckner Interchange into the area, and that's also affecting the inbound side of the George Washington Bridge. Street cleaning rules are in effect for today, and it's going to be a pretty nice day. Here's Bill. You are right, Madam. It is going to be a really nice start to your day. We have sunshine as we look across the park here, the Jackie Onassis Reservoir, Flushing Bay, Long Island Sound out that way. Your temperature 66 degrees, a little southwest wind. Nice morning here. Elmhurst, Queens is 67. Sheepshead Bay, Brooklyn, 67, and low 60s. Long Island up to Poughkeepsie, we're looking at 71 by 10 o'clock. 76 degrees, more clouds and sun to 80 this afternoon and uh, into this evening. We're going to talk about some rain from a storm coming our way for tomorrow and into Saturday in your Act Weather Forecast. And I'll outline the weekend for you in just a moment. Ken, over to you. All right, Bill, thank you. At 634, we have some new information about a deadly accident that happened at a fair in Ohio. People thrown from a ride. 
We did some digging. We found out that that same ride was recently right here in New Jersey at a fair at the Meadowlands. The accident happened at the State Fair in Columbus, Ohio. Eyewitness News reporter Candace McAllen is in our newsroom with more. Candace, good morning. Yeah, Ken, good morning to you. The Ohio State Fair just tweeting that they will open this morning, but the rides are shut down for now. It was just two and a half weeks ago that this same ride was at the New Jersey State Fair in Meadowlands, and documents show the ride had been inspected every day when it was located in New Jersey. We now know that the ride passed all standard inspections Wednesday with four inspectors signing off on that inspection leaving many questions about how exactly this happened overnight a trip to the Ohio State Fair going horribly wrong a ride called the fireball swinging and spinning in the air when suddenly it breaks apart midair flinging riders onto the concrete below multiple uh, passengers were ejected at high speed with high energy um, many feet, at least 20 or 30, if not more, into the air. Several people rushed to the hospital, victims ranging from their early teens to their 60s, and an 18-year-old pronounced dead on the scene. It happened on the opening day of the fair, organizers saying that the ride passed inspection just hours before the accident. Ohio Governor John Kasich ordering the fair's rides shut down until additional safety inspections can be completed. It's kind of hard to imagine that you have family that goes to a state fair and those calls come that there was a terrible accident, a terrible tragedy and somebody you love was involved. Yeah, tragic accident. We are seeing also this morning that other fairs around the country are closing rides that are similar to the fireball as a precaution. Live in the newsroom this morning, Candace McCowan, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Candace, thank you. And you can see more video and pictures of the moments after the accident at ABC 7 and Y and our free news app as well. Good Morning America will have a live update ahead at 7 a.m. 636, we're also following breaking news out of California where Justin Bieber hit a paparazzo with his truck in Beverly Hills. Officials say it appears it was just an accident. You can see the singer did stay on the scene. He comforted the man till authorities could arrive. Bieber was leaving a church event when photographers surrounded his truck. The victim was taken to the hospital but is expected to be okay and Bieber was not cited for the incident. Jurors will hear closing arguments today in the federal trial of former pharmaceutical CEO Martin Shkreli. Shkreli, who is best known for raising the cost of a life-saving drug, is accused of lying to rich investors in two hedge funds that he ran into the ground. His attorneys say that he's a misunderstood genius. Shkreli called the, cast, the case bogus in a recent Facebook post. Suspect is under arrest this morning following a deadly stabbing in the Bronx that may have been triggered by an obscene gesture. The victim, 25 year old Billy Sierra, was stabbed and killed Monday night in the East Chester section after flashing his middle finger to another driver. Police say 47 year old Juan Garcia chased him and then stabbed Sierra with a kitchen knife. Garcia is charged with murder. There's still so many questions surrounding President Trump's announcement banning transgender people from serving in the military. And the order is sparking some outrage. Protesters gathered outside an army recruiting office in Times Square condemning the president's announcement made over Twitter. In it, he said the government would not accept or allow transgender individuals to serve, saying the military cannot be burdened with the tremendous costs and disruption. A Rand Institute study says there are more than 2,400 transgender people serving in the military. The fact that he would alienate all those people working for the military, those transgender people who have literally given their lives in service to this country, mind-boggling. And we're here to support them. Well, President Trump pledged to be a friend to the LGBT community during his campaign. As for how this order will be carried out and what happens to transgender people currently serving, the Pentagon is referring all questions to the White House. 638, a group of 10 governors, both Democrat and Republican, are calling on the Senate to work on a plan to overhaul Obamacare. The governors urge leaders to set aside the flawed bill and work with them on making health care more affordable and available to Americans. This comes after the Senate voted 55 to 45 yesterday to reject legislation to repeal major portions of Obamacare without a replacement. New details now. North Korea could test another intercontinental ballistic missile as early as today. That's according to U.S. officials. The country has not launched a missile since its historic test of an intercontinental missile on July 4th. But officials suspect that another test could come today because it's a North Korean holiday known as Day of Victory. The holiday celebrates the end of the Korean War in 1953. 
639, you're never more than seven minutes away from weather and traffic. Now let's step outside with Mr. Bill. Well, here we go. This morning we have a nice morning, nice and comfortable suit weather. Very comfortable today. Light wind out of the south-southwest. Temperatures in the 60s this morning and actually a little cooler than our normal temperatures for the hour of the day, our averages. So it looks really good. We're going to be looking at sunshine today. Here we go. Let's take a look across the park. 66 degrees as we rocket across the park. Good morning. We're looking at partly cloudy skies and a calm wind. It's going to be a nice start to the day. We are looking at today, you know, good air quality, a lot of sunshine. UV index is going to be a 9 today. So we're also looking at that grass ball. If you notice something, that's starting to pick up a little bit. We got a little moisture out here today. When you have that southerly wind and moisture, that grass pollen starts to pick up. We are watching a low pressure storm system in the Great Lakes that will start heading toward the Atlantic coast. And that's what could bring us some rain tomorrow evening, tomorrow night, and into Saturday. But today is a great day. I mean, we're at 77 by lunch, 80 this afternoon, with a ton of sunshine. Just a really nice day today. You'll feel it's a little warmer, a little more humid, but it's a great July day. That low, I'm going to tell you more about that next. So stay right there. Heather O'Rourke from the great state of New Jersey. It's National New Jersey Day. That's right. How's it going? We are looking at the Ed Koch 59th Street Bridge going inbound lower level. So into Manhattan, we do have a disabled truck that's in the process of being cleared away. Heading over to our maps on 78 eastbound at exit 45. Dump truck accident. News Copter 7 is up above. John Del Giorno showing us the mess right over here. We have only the shoulder getting by. They're out there. They're trying to clean up this fuel spill and whatever else was dumped on the roadway. So you have delays on 78 eastbound all the way back to exit 41, bringing yourself into exit 45. Back to our maps we go. We have this problem on the six trains. It's a switching problem at 125th Street. Morrison Essex Line, New Jersey Transit diverted to Hoboken. Now, before you get to the accident by exit 45 on 78, we've also had an accident here by exit 12 all morning long. Metro North looks good. Cross Bronx West right near the Major Deegan. That's an accident. Some major delays getting into that spot. And Jackie Robinson Parkway westbound at Metropolitan Avenue, unauthorized truck. So they have to get the truck off of Jackie Robinson Parkway. Street cleaning rules are in effect for today. Lorraine Kent, over to you. Heather, thank you. 6.41 is their time. A mother in Connecticut fearing she may be deported, seeking refuge inside a church, but now she may need not worry anymore. Plus, a woman found dead on a cruise ship off the coast of Alaska. Investigators calling it suspicious. Now the FBI is involved. And wild video of inmates who broke out of a jail in California. It turns out they recorded, they recorded the escape on a phone. The new video when we come back.